welcome to join us for CLASK World Championship 2018 in Helsinki, Finland. At this point, we only have our eight best players left, and let's find out who they are. We have Jussi Rasanen, Finland. To make some noise, yay! Okay. Then we have Victor Breum, Denmark. Thomas Preus, Poland. Julian Pesseur, France. Andrew Steele, United States of America. Oscar Granerud, Denmark. Filippo Balin, Italy. And Yaroko, Germany. Welcome. And now let's move on to the quarterfinals and we will start with the first pair who are Jussi Rasanen, Finland and Viktor Breum, Denmark. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the quarterfinals of the Class World Championship Final. We have Simon Bizant in the announcing booth and Kevin, just Kevin Reeder, as your announcers today. We have a great match set up here between Victor, representing Denmark, and Yusi, representing Finland, here the hometown of the Class World Championship. So, for those that are unfamiliar with what's just about to happen, is both players flick their uh, score cards into as far as they can to the zero without going over to decide who goes first. Looks like UC won that. Looks like he's looking to serve from a short side serve. Both players being right-handed. We got some aggressive play to start off. Oh, yep. and UC takes one into his own goal. Maybe that's just a psychological edge that he wants to gain over his opponent somehow. Just lure him into a false sense of security. I, I, I agree with you, Simon. Uh, the, the Victor taking a biscuit and gets the, rid of the biscuit. So now we folks have a uh, have a no biscuit point game happening right now. Both players looking for the angles, searching for the weak spot in the opponent's armor. Of course, Victor does have that biscuit attached to him. It makes certain shots slightly harder to make. And, and psychologically, I think that that does play. Even though there is no chance that you can get a get a biscuit point scored upon you, I think just having it on you makes it so that you you, you think differently when you're playing. Uh, maybe that had something to do with yeah, that point there. Quite possibly. Victor takes a point. We have a one-one game, ladies and gentlemen. Victor serving strong side, far side. They're using the backhand serve. You see, going into the corner, Victor trying to play with a biscuit in the corner, and he takes, you see, takes one off of the uh, far side for a goal, making it a 2 1 game. Of course, Victor is very strong off the serve, uh, perhaps not just there, uh, but. <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, oh, look at that. We're, we're, sitting, we're sitting here talking, and, and then a goal is scored. We, we, have to, we, have, we have to keep up with the times. Victor looking like, uh, whoa, almost taking a almost taking a goal there, but does a great job pulling the biscuit out of the corner and onto UC. What, uh, what do they call that move in Britain, Simon? <laughs> what move exactly are you referring to? <laughs> I, I know, there's so, all the moves. Yeah, exactly, there's so today. much going. Oh, man, Victor takes a class. Yep. We have a first class of the semifinals. The biscuit boy resets the <laughs> with his white gloves, resetting the biscuits. Usually taking another biscuit right off the bat. He seems to have done that a couple of times. Have you noticed that? Yeah, but it doesn't seem to matter too much. Uh, it seems he's still ahead in the points, and he must be comfortable with that biscuit attached to him. Eat well, you know, um, he is not British, so it doesn't come with his tea. But now we have a five-one lead. You see over Victor. Remember, this is the best two of three, folks. So Victor still has a chance. Yeah, he's got a lot to make up at the moment. And he's already starting to come back. We have a 2-5. I've seen it done before. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen many times before, especially during uh, Jason's games earlier, that five-point lead 
can mean absolutely nothing. That is correct. That is correct. Victor playing the biscuits, trying to figure something out here. We got Usage playing the biscuits as well. Both players attacking at the biscuits, playing the angles as well. And Victor goes for a biscuit shot. Nothing there. Angel save on UC's side. So do you feel like uh, the psychological yes. edge? There we go. There we go. Can be gained through the biscuit play, much fair, Kevin. Uh, you know, I I don't know. I I I don't quite know. Like I feel like. When you are when you are playing the biscuits, it, it really depends. Oh, and we have a loss of control. The first loss of control of the semifinals. This is, I believe, players are going to change sides now. Yeah, it is the best of three, so uh, it looks like UC will look to try and close out the best of three if you can gain another now, victory here. Now, Simon, I, I don't know. Did you play on this board at all before the before the players had a chance? This to? exact board, not. No, not this exact. Because it's a pretty smooth play, actually. It's uh, it's one of the smoother boards that I personally have played on. All right, game off, or game on, I mean. <laughs> uh, whoa, <laughs> hey, look at that. No longer even on the board. <laughs> Victor says, get out of town, and his striker is off the board. He's looking at it as, to see, as if it malfunctioned okay. or something, like there's an airbag in there. Quite possibly. But, um, no, I think the smoothness of the board is probably down to the very good maintenance that the referees are keeping throughout the tournament. They have been doing a great job. Ooh, UC almost picks up two biscuits off them. Luckily, only picked up one. UC on the offensive now with the one biscuit psychological move like we talked about before. He seems to have every point almost taken a biscuit. And both players playing those side angle sides. I think that's called an isosceles triangle. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, but sure, I'll allow it. <laughs> Uh, right now, it just seems like a, a very quick back and forth between uh, both opponents. We got a ball off the table. UC set the serve short side again. He seems to always be serving from that short side. And now Victor trying to line one up, goes for a two banker. Nothing. UC almost loses control. Yeah, this is what we call break dancing, just to try and get that kind of edge on his opponent. That was the shortest break dance I've ever seen then. It, so long as you can Victor bust with the a move. great save and a break dance <laughs> by UC. Also shaking the biscuit. Victor going for the triple deke. Charlie Banks style Mighty Ducks unsuccessful. In and out. Bounces off the biscuit. Yep, there's no magnets in place. Oh, and he gets one in. You yeah. see, now with the 2 0 lead, so folks. The button, He's in a good position to thing. take the uh, best of uh, Looks so like far. Victor asking for a striker change. Ladies and gentlemen, we see those white gloves again. It's the safe hands of the referee, Kevin. I, I agree, I agree. <laughs> Yusi takes another biscuit again. Like, this just seems to be his MO. I've, I've never seen someone be so successful by taking a biscuit so think, many times. I think there's an edge to be gained by taking it. It's no longer there to distract you. You can play your own game. You know you're not in his immediate. Well, I agree with that. When they when it's on your side, you know, you don't have to worry about it then. But he just seems to be going to the middle and taking it. I think he's trying to play it, but... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be phasing him at all. Oh, Victor with a great biscuit send. Yeah, and now he'll have a chance to serve the other biscuit into his opponent. No, he chooses Victor the serving side. strong side again. What's he, 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 oh, Very in and close. out. Not enough finesse, and you see again. Now, if you uh, see wins this one, that eliminates Victor, correct? Does, yeah. Okay. All right, so now we see Victor going with the UC strategy <laughs> right after UC takes one. Well, everyone seems to have the advantage right now. <laughs> yeah. as, uh, as is, we got a 4-0 lead. It's going to take some coming back, and Victor does it, ladies and gentlemen. So Denmark, not out of it yet. It requires full concentration at every moment possible. Oh, boy, look at that. We, we got a bunch of biscuit action going on here. There's a lot of action on that field. I haven't seen action like that since like a 1970s movie. Oh, Victor takes a class. The second class. Yeah, UC yeah. hasn't classed yet, has he? He has not. Man. What do you what, what do you think is what do you think is going on, Simon? That's the difference between a player classing and not classing. You think it's nerves or I, what? I think it's more to do with how they think their opponent's going to play. If you play too defensively, you're always in that danger of classing yourself. Uh, if you can bring yourself ah, up. there we go. I think that's the first biscuit point of this of this match too. Wow. Yep. 
But, uh, so we're seeing a lot of goals happening to, in this particular match. You know, both players playing a, a pretty solid game. Yeah, it seems they're striking the biscuits so hard they're normally not on the field to play for. Yeah. So. Victor trying to make a comeback. Wow. Well, it's never over even at five points. Well, he does have the he does have the Danish mojo on his side. I mean, in realistically, it is a Danish game by creation, and so um, maybe there's like a, a little mystique like about it that uh, it. he's tapping into the mickle of the <laughs> of the game. Sure. Um. I mean, he does have the advantage of having the biscuit on him at the moment, and so far that's worked out great. I, I, yeah, we, we might as well just start calling that the UC. <laughs> yeah. But there's a, a back and forth between both players at the moment, neither seeming to gain an advantage for it. Oh, he rims one. Oh, and UC loses control, but not to a point where Victor can capture it. Because that is that you have to you have to capture it or be unable to regain control, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that don't know the rules of class, it seems like oh, he's in control close right one now. in and out. This is a long point. Oh, oh and Lucy takes it with a six-three victory. Victor disappointed. That's still okay. We still have one more Dane in the championship. That's going to be Azure, so it's going to all fall on his shoulders. Looks like the referee is inviting the players over to the house. Players are going to sit down for an interview. We're going to take a quick color commentary break. Congratulations, you see, you won the game. Thank you. Do you think that being in front of your home audience and your home country has helped you in this game? Well, it's literally 10 minutes from my home, so it definitely helps with my friends there following my girlfriend. Uh, I think perhaps. How does it feel to be proceeding to the semi-finals at this point? It feels great. I'm sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of expectations do you have for the semi-finals? It depends who I'm gonna face. I don't know why, but the only uh, person I'm afraid of to play against is Oscar. So the rest is... I'm, I'm not... Uh, oh, okay. So you didn't hear me. <laughs> uh, so... Um, well, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be fun. Why is Asger, uh, you know, a, like a bad player to you? What's there to that? He can do some biscuit magic. Uh, uh -huh, okay. That, uh, with what he usually can beat me. So you're going to adjust your tactics during the game. I have to. Yeah, that's part of the game. Yeah. Okay. What is your secret? Uh, to put in the hours, and uh, I think. I'm the number one fanatic in Finland for this game. I play it more than anyone, so I think I just play it more than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Are you confident going to the semifinals? I feel good. Okay. Yeah. And Victor, that was a very tough game. Yeah. Yeah, you usually played really well. Yeah. I didn't play very well. I had a lot of nerves. You were nervous? Yeah. I'm sure. Um, if you could change something, what would you change when you look back at the game? Not be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, you? But, but yeah, UC plays a nice calm game. Very uh, softer balls than some of the other players. And uh, yeah, I think that... What is the yeah. tactic you use? Um, uh, try to focus on defense and then get the, the magnets in play. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you use the high guard, be the near near the center line, or what do you do? No, I try to keep back, uh, but maybe I need to switch that up. <laughs> Your striker flew at one point; it flew very far away. Yeah, from the team. yeah, I haven't tried what that happened? before. I I think maybe the striker was a little worn, and it uh, ah, okay. <laughs> flew off. Yeah, yeah. And you see anything you would like to say? Well. Um, not really. I'm, I'm really enjoying this event and I'm looking forward for Did the next match. Did you see match. this? Yeah, Trophy? I'm, I'm a little bit drooling <laughs> the, the, this direction, yeah. Okay. Thank you, boys, and good luck to you. And I hope to see you next year, Victor. Thank, Thank you.
And we are moving on and we will take our next pair. And they are Thomas Preus from Poland and Julian Passeur from France. Please welcome. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tomak from Poland and Julian Passeur from France. Both players flick off and we got, a, we got Tomak taking the first serve. Tomak has a very interesting serve, if you've been paying attention, ladies and gentlemen. He always seems to go for the same type of serve. It's kind of a straight serve. He plays it shorthand, but usually plays it yeah. off of the short side as well. Yeah, I, of course I have noticed that Called it. There you go. It's a very unique serve. Um, yeah, he does well with it. Uh, you see there, we see here that he's already started. Oh, great save by Julian. That looked like it was in, it rimmed in and out. Uh, players not really paying attention to the biscuits. Yeah, it seems like and they're just going directly for that victory through the goal. Oh, we have the second, well, maybe that's the third, first class of this yeah, initial absolutely. match. Tomak taking a 1-0 yeah. lead, looking to extend that. It always it always helps when you can get a, get a two-point lead on your opponent. There we go, we're seeing some biscuit play now. Well, it gives you breathing room to get that lead, but sometimes it's not enough. It does, it uh, allows you to be a little bit more aggressive and try some things that you normally wouldn't. Okay, biscuits are off the table. No biscuit points can be scored. And now players are just going for goals, maybe a loss of control, or trying to force the other player into a class. Yeah, it's all down to skill right here, Kevin. Like, it's gonna show. And there we go. Tomak with a goal. And just whilst the referee resets the board there. You can see it's currently 2-0, but it is the first game of three, so... That's right. Looking at the stats, we have Julian. 90% uh, of his points have been scored by goals, 3% by magnets, and 7% by a loss of, control by, loss of control by the striker. Tomak, on the other hand, has 65% are being goals, 9% of his goals being by Clask, and 21% being magnets. So we should be seeing some more biscuit play by the by Tomak. And we have a goal by uh, Julian, yep. making it a, a, a one-point game now. Yeah, with the uh, casual dab at the end of the victory. <laughs> yeah. Referee's doing a great job keeping the board clean. We see those gloves coming on to clean it every once in a while, giving the board a little touch here and there. Oh, one biscuit gone. Yeah. Tomak says, get that off here, and takes one in the in return. And we have a rim around the rosy. <laughs> it's a very difficult position that Tomak is in because of that biscuit at the backfield. Uh, if he takes that on, then it could spell trouble. You know, I'm not seeing it today at all. I'm not seeing very many straight shots. That's uh, I know for me, that's one of the shots that I defend worse against mm -hmm. is the is the straight shot. I'm always expecting the angles, as I feel these players are. But when it comes to a straight shot, it's just something unexpected that happens. Yeah, I think most uh, players are trying to find that back corner that they can score against their opponents. But that's mostly because a lot of players we've seen so far are very strong at the front defense. It is, yeah, and it, and it's and it's important to take into note that on the side that the scoring discs are, if you are if your backhanded play is to that side, you can hit it a little bit harder without that ball going out. We have Julian scoring a point on himself. Yep, his striking is just too fierce for even himself. <laughs> Both players ready. Julian puts serve. a biscuit onto Tomak's side, and he takes one. Tomak then bounces one in and out of the class. He's in danger already, although Julian willingly picking up that <laughs> third biscuit for him. And now it's reversed. Tomak puts it on the side. He's got one in the corner now. And play going side to side. Seems to... Oh, almost be ignoring the fact that the biscuit is there to his advantage and just trying to go for, for the goal. You see, uh, you see Tomak here, he's, he, he plays, he's constantly moving. In fact, you can look at his side of the board and it's a little bit more roughed up yeah. than Julian's side. Julian plays a more laid back kind of game, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's waiting for that opportunity to come to him rather than controlling the game himself. We had a long point going on. Oh, and he tries to play one off the biscuit, yep. miss it, and it rims out again. Yeah, so no oh, longer are we break dances. <laughs> trying to shake that biscuit, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Although it does look like it's going to be down to the goals. 
unless one of those players can shake the biscuit, which does happen. You can't do it intentionally. Julian takes a point. We have a 2-3 game, one point differential. We see Ula, the, 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 today's biscuit boy, placing the biscuits in the middle. Okay. Is that the official term, biscuit boy? I think it should be if it's not. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even know how you classify that point. I think he almost took the biscuits before the goal, but Pretty much. whatever. Yeah. A He's point is a point, right? And only one point, even if there was two. That's points. right. Like Julian's looking to regain control, but Thomas is just not giving him any opportunities. No, he's, he's very, very aggressive strikes. Very, uh, whereas Julian playing more of a defensive role, I, I feel like more passive. There was a straight on shot we talked about, we weren't seeing many of those. Yeah, just a little bit of breakdown. And Tomax scores a point here. We got a 5 2 game. This is just game one. We got, we got quite a show here, folks. Yeah, you can see Julian's face is just a little bit. Flustered. I thought he was going to turn his hat back yeah. there for a second in, in terms of like a, a notion to get serious or intimidate the other mm. opponent. It's a common strategy that we've seen throughout the tournament in 2018. Yeah. You know, oh, sticks him with a biscuit. Great biscuit play by Tomac. Poland has done a great job just developing their players. Uh, they, they've had a great showing here today and in other tournaments around the world. They, did, they, they, they have a great structure set up, and it's really showing here. Oh, oh and Julian just man. tries to shake that biscuit, but ends up getting Players are going to switch out. sides now. Biscuit boy Ola replacing, resetting the board. Ola cleaning, giving the, giving the bottom of uh, Julian's. Oh, we got, a, we got a slow clap. It's turned into a fast clap now. What do you know? like he needs some encouragement and that's what he gets. Unfortunately you don't get a point for that. You just no. get the you just get the you just get the momentum maybe yeah. going forward. Hopefully he can retain that momentum going forward here. Julian takes a biscuit and he's got a biscuit on his side that's slowly creeping over into the middle. There we go. Oh, oh in a class. A desperate defense there and it just unfortunately didn't work out very well for him. Ooh, oh very man! Shot there. It looks like they're focusing. On oh, this look at that! I I counted seven times that that went around. How many times did you count that went around? It was too fast to see, Kevin. Too fast. That typically is the case with class. But immediately returns the point. You know, sometimes things happen so fast. I feel like we're three moves behind the point. I think it, uh, these players are at a level where it's very hard to keep up with them in certain situations. Ah, Just like we this. got a backdoor galore there. <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> so we got 3-1. Tomac up on Julian. Remember, the set score is 1 Tomac, Julian 0. Both players playing side to side. And we got a side backboard goal by none other than Tomac. He's shown strength throughout this entire game so far. He's very much in control of where the ball is going and exactly how he wants the game to be played. Julian just trying to oh, regain. Oh, takes a biscuit and a double yeah. biscuit. That's uh, I think that's uh, that's our second or third one of the of the entire uh, elimination bracket here. So this is yep. it's exciting to see. Those are those are the hardest points to score, but they're always the most rewarding. Absolutely. You get one of those. There we go, and we have a game, folks. Tomac advancing, eliminating Julian. You know, when you get a biscuit point, there's just no greater feeling man, because it's like you 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 kind of like outfox the fox. Yes, yeah. it's you know? psychological warfare. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's biscuit warfare. Biscuit warfare. That's right. <laughs> On to the interview. So, congratulations. Thomas, you won. Yes, I won. Happy? Satisfied? Yes, satisfied, yes. It was my goal to be in the semifinal. How long have you play, been playing class? Uh, about three years. Three years? Yeah. But uh, well, last year I played a lot. Have you been participating in any tournaments before yeah, this yeah, one? You have. Yeah. Have you won them? I was third. Third. Three? Yeah. Oh, that's great. And uh, Julian, how do you feel? Are you okay? Uh, it's a real deception. 
but uh, but whatever, it, it's a good player. It's one of, of the, the best player in the world. So lose against the best player, it's a normal thing, and 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 good 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 game. And Thomas, how much did you feel like was that luck or skill that you had? I think skill, but Julian is a very good player. How much does uh, luck have to do with the game, how it goes? I think there is no no luck in the, in the game. There's no luck. No, because in the game. you lose every time in the same situation. So when you lose, there, there is no no part of luck. Mm. Uh, it's not a game of luck. It's a game of practice, of yes. training, yes. and of tactics. If you choose the the wrong tactics, or if you don't train, you lose. It's not luck. So it's the best player. Yes, I know that you've been practicing a lot by yourself, yeah. alone. But you rather practice with someone else. Why is that? Because there is not enough players uh, in the world, so uh, everybody here works on that. Uh, we try to 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 find new players every day, and uh, and um, this this kind of game uh, works for that too. So so. Why did you lose? What would you do better or differently next time if you played against Thomas? Um, I, th I think the players like, like, like Thomas are, uh, are, uh, have tactics and the same tactics and they are very strong in these tactics. I try to he, he use the, the same circuit on, on, the, on the board with the ball. So I try to, to do vari vari variation with, with my, my play, uh, but it doesn't work. Because it's strong, but I think I think we, we can we can we can win against the, this kind of players uh, when you're using this this kind of tactic with the, with the variety. Mm. And I try to do this. Yes, Thomas, are you going to use the same tactics next on next game or? Yes, for sure. You're not going to change anything, no, are you? No, it's no? My, the best tactic. Okay, it's the best tactic. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Good luck. And now let's move on to the third match. And this time we will have Andrew Steele from United States of America and Asger Granerud from Denmark. Welcome. USA, USA. I think that solidifies who I'm rooting for. Uh, both of these players have seen each other before. Um, in the last year, in the Class World Championship. Oh, look, what do we got there? We got a 0-0. Zero, zero. This is going to be a tight match, ladies and gentlemen. It's already off to a great start. Asger goes for a flick and doesn't even get anywhere with it. Andrew's going to win the win to serve. He's going to go for a strong side serve, serving his backhand. Serves it right to Asger. Asger going for the biscuits. He's a biscuit player. From what I've noticed, Asger loves playing the biscuits. Absolutely. The, uh, thing In fact, I almost thought Asger was British <laughs> because he loves biscuits so much. Uh, we see a point here. Andrew takes a... Uh, a, a biscuit loss against uh, Asger, and he's going to serve again. Yeah, he put uh, Andrew in a very difficult situation there, and it's very uh, hard to come back. From. Asger went to play the biscuit, yeah. took one, and then also answers back with a goal. This is much more like the play that we would expect from Asger. In the group stages, he seemed to almost struggle, but... He did, he did, honestly. Uh, it, it was almost, it, he was down to a decider match where he was even going to get in or not. So yeah. it's time to put up or shut up, as they say. Yeah, but it, Andrew is by no means anywhere near out of this competition yet. This is very much a close game between the two. Oh, man! Yeah. He just lost of control and a goal. Thank God you can only score one point at a time. 
You know, uh, Asger though, in a very oh, there we go. We got an ace. An ace. Yeah. Have, you, have we seen an ace yet? Not today? so far. I don't think uh, so. Well, yeah. Not so far in the uh, semi-finals, at least. Right, right, right. Uh, about a moment. Andrew. <laughs> Both players trying to play a biscuit. They take yeah. one, and Andrew puts one in the goal, uh, eliminating Asger's lead. We have a three-three game. Is it's very interesting to see the different styles of play here. Andrew preferring to uh, use the angles across the board to score, and Asgo using the biscuits to score. And we see an angle goal yeah. there. Yeah, he, he's been doing that, well, since the tournament started today, and it seems to be working out well for him. Oh, Andrew takes a biscuit and puts a goal in there. That's what I'm talking about, USA. You can just see the face on Andrew there. He's very calm, collected. All right. We got a 6-3 win. Players are going to switch sides. That's our guy, USA. Andrew knows exactly what he's doing when he goes into a game against an opponent. You should kind of be rooting for USA, too, because we're kind of like your little brother that's better at things. Uh, well, little brother I agree with. Um, <laughs> but let's leave it at that. I mean, we do coffee, you do tea, but it's whatever. Yeah, All I mean, right, both players with a biscuit. Uh, you know what? Maybe we should start calling them, like, cookies or something, right? Sure, if you prefer. Um, What's the more British thing? <laughs> the British thing is biscuits, definitely. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a biscuit point here. Andrew Steele. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. I yep. got the sides mixed up. Asger getting a biscuit point against Andrew. All right, there we go. Biscuit taken by Asker, yeah. and Asker gets the biscuit off the field, yeah. and the other biscuit off the field. So now we have a goal class or loss of control point going on here. Yeah. What's it going to be? Asker, I've seen lose control a couple of times during the group stages, so that very well could possibly happen. I think so. It's always a possibility. But it doesn't. Yeah. And Asger takes a 2-0 to zero lead. As much as Asgo loves to play the biscuit game, he's definitely still a very skilled player when it comes to the goal game. That's right. And we see uh, Andrew taking another biscuit. And another biscuit, yeah, making it a 3-0 game. That's two biscuit points for Asger right now. In fact, Asger right now has uh, uh, twenty or uh, more than about twenty percent of his points have been biscuit points. Yes, just as goes to show you the kind of skill that he's developed. That's throughout. that's among the highest of any of the players. He takes another point here, looking to looking to shut him out. You know, Asger is. Uh, you know, if we look back to last year, it, it, I came in and qualified last place in the finals or in the group stages, and then came back to win it. But Asger is is basically showing now that that doesn't mean anything. Oh, absolutely. It's basically a, a mirror of last match right now where Andrew is struggling to even get a single point on the board. Andrew's got to come back. He's got to score six unanswered points. It's not impossible. We've seen it before. But, uh, man, it, 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 it really... Uh, I would like to see both players' hands right now. And another biscuit point. Wow. I think three of those points were were biscuit points in that round. I think so, yeah. so we're going to uh, we're going to a game three final now. Yeah, and this, this is the first this is, that we've seen so far. This is gonna yeah, this has been a very interesting match. Uh, I would say I would argue almost the most interesting, just because of the technicality of these of these points. Oh, absolutely! You can see two very distinct styles of play from both players here, and not only that, they're able to adapt to the other person's play style when they need to. Good biscuit play by both players. Oh, and off of the biscuit, yeah. Asger plays one and puts it in the goal on Andrew. Oh. USA, um, man, uh, it, it, they're in my heart, but I, I, I gotta, I, I don't know what type of vibes I can send to Andrew right now, but I need to send them. If, uh, if you're watching this right now, ladies and gentlemen, please send some send some vibes to our USA player here. Isn't that good thoughts and prayers in the USA? Uh, it, like if you're watching on the Twitch, send some heart, send some something, because he needs it, ladies and gentlemen. We, uh, we, we, we do not want to let Denmark eliminate USA here. Well, you don't. Well, <laughs> that's right, I don't. Because then who am I going to root for? Sure. Uh, maybe a skilled player. Uh, oh, are you talking <laughs> trash now, Simon? This is a very small booth. Yeah, it's a very small booth. <laughs> All right, so Asger with an angel, and then Andrew with two biscuits on his side. Andrew giving Asger another angel. Yep. 
And it's a 2-0 lead. Right now, Asger holds over Andrew. Got to be honest with you, Kevin. Now, every time we've seen a double angel in someone's goal, they've always lost. And that was the first time we've ever seen yeah, them well. come back from it. Asger is just really dominating the last and nine one points. Of, one of those ladies in the crowd is real loud, aren't they? Well, she's very excited for what is shaping up to be a great tournament. There we go. All right, Andrew on the board. We needed that. Asger looking very serious right now. Like, did you see that little stare? He just well, came and looked up from the board and was just kind of staring. Andrew smiling yeah. about it. He was such a gentleman, he even put the point on the board for Andrew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Right now, you can see Asger just playing it slightly slower, just getting control of the game before he. All right, there we go. USA trying to make a comeback. I like what I'm seeing, folks. I know as announcer we're not supposed to take sides, but this is our only USA champion in the in the Class World Championship right now. So, forgive me. Mm, I'm sure the viewers forgive you. <laughs> well, the Americans love it. I'm sure they do. Uh, Andrew takes a biscuit as you're trying to play another one, Adam. And we're, we're seeing Oof. some angle play in and out on Andrew's behalf. Another in and out. Man, this is, uh, he just needs to get the finesse down. He seems to be playing off the short side quite a bit. If he played those off the long side, the, the point scoring side, he may be able to hit those a little bit harder in order to in order to make them stay and land in the goal. It seems like Asuka's really focused on getting Andrew to that south side of the board. Where well, you know, are. when you have uh, when you have biscuits on a player's side, it's very wise to hit the ball at the biscuit because just like we saw there, he doesn't want to go to defend because he's going to take a biscuit. Exactly. Or if it bounces off a biscuit, it makes a very weird angular move yep. and then often ends in a goal. Yeah, there's very few players that can play fast enough and precise enough. Well, there's one player. Them. One player, who is that player? Uh, they might be sitting in this booth right now, I don't know. All right, so we have a we have a 4-3 lead. Asgirl is circling the ball, but serves, and knocks a biscuit off. In and out again on Andrew's, on Andrew's uh, offensive attempt there. Takes a biscuit, and ooh, almost very takes a biscuit, there. but very good, uh, very good dodge, yep. if you will. You can see uh, the biscuit and, spinning ooh, there, whoa, whoa, and Andrew's slowly, not sure. Slowly going towards him. But uh, he just disregards it, and yeah. now he's gonna try and ooh, in and out again by Asger. What's he? Andrew keeps looking at that biscuit. Like, what? What is he? What is he thinking? That a fly is on the table. <laughs> There's one thing about Andrew is that he's a very calm player, no matter what situation he's in. Yeah, he's always smiling, always yeah. a happy player. And you know what? That's kind of what class is all about: just being happy, having fun, enjoying yourself. Asger playing the biscuit. Yeah. He's very confident with those biscuits, even ah, with Ah, but he takes an angular set. And good. Andrew yeah, now has good. to score three unanswered points in order to take this. This is uh, this is a tough spot to be in. Yeah, I think he's got it in him, though. Uh, from what we've seen in the group stages, he's... I saw him place the ball there. He didn't seem to have very many uh, shaky nerves. Absolutely not. It's One not... way to get those nerves out is to do some type of physical activity. You might have... Oh, hey, there, there we go. go. Or just score a goal. There you go. Score a goal and get the, get those nerves right out yeah, of there. Absolutely. Uh, I think Andrew knows what he needs to achieve here, and he's going to take his time to do it. I would love to see... Have we seen a 5-5 five, five point yet? No, not so far outside. My me the you know, stage. I was in a car accident a couple of years, so my memory serves me oh. poor, so I'm going to rely on you for memory things. We saw a great... Uh, in and out there by Asger. Oh, and a pickup picks, up. picks it up out of the class. Asger advances on yeah. eliminating USA. <laughs> how did how did how did he get four biscuits on him at the end there? What where did those come from? That's the kind of decimation that Asger just. All right, and on to the interview, folks. Wow, what a game, Asger! Congratulations. Thank you very much. It looked like you had a lot of fun there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've played each other before. Ah, it's always okay, a good so game. that's yeah. why. Wow, that was tight. Can you analyze the game a little bit? I didn't see any strikers flying, just the biscuits. What happened? Uh, well, um, I started off fairly strong, and then Oscar kind of uh, took it the other way. Uh, the I don't last two know matches. if I had some nerves in the first round, and I lost them after being behind and had nothing to lose. Okay. What kind of challenges did you encounter on the game? I, I think... 
I don't know. Uh, I think that in the first round um, I, I failed to defend. Uh, Andrew scored a lot of points with very, very slow balls just going straight down the middle, which I didn't manage to defend. And I think that's why I lost the first set. And I think my defense went up in the second and third so. set. Yeah. yeah, at least the second game, definitely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know Andrew is very aggressive defending because I actually played against him in, back in the coffee room and I think I scored, what, three points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very aggressive. <laughs> well, um, what kind of improvements do you need to make to... Um, well, I was very bad at uh, doing what I wanted to do with the biscuits. Um, and in particular, uh, Oscar was very good at the opposite. I mean, there was a lot of times where I picked up one biscuit and he had several on his side that he was able to basically manipulate at will, um, and that's not a that's not a good position to be in, um, particularly against somebody that's as good with the biscuits as Oscar is. So, um, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Well, Oscar, how are you gonna proceed to the semifinals? What are you gonna change in your playing tactics? I'm gonna defend from the first set. Okay, and um, well. I guess that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and good luck to the semifinals thank and thank you. you Andrew so much for playing and hope to see you next year. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>are heading to the last game of our quarterfinals and the last pair will be Filippo Balin from Italy and Jaropo from Germany. Filippo on your screen, Filippo will be on your left and Jaro will be on your right. Oh, I don't know if that counts for anything, but it should almost. I, I think that's an honor point, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jaro is going to win serve. Struggling to get the uh, you know uh, you, do, you, uh, uh, you can do that or you blow in it. If you blow in it, it'll pop it right out. Oh, okay, so you're familiar with the blowing technique? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So we're already on the way here. I think this is going to be one of the closest matches so far. All right. Uh, Yarrow's not too phased by that kind of uh, play. He's never really too phased about anything, no matter how far behind he might be. Filippo, a, a very aggressive player. I saw him play in the Manchester tournament, and he had he has he, he just has one stellar type of game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been. Oh, look at that! Yeah, like a psych out. He, oh, and go. a double biscuit point. <laughs> he psyched, He looked like he was gonna go for the ball right there, and went for the biscuit and said, stuck it right to him. Yep, him Followed up with hands. another one. Look at that, both players just whack that ball. Sometimes when you're at this level of play, the best thing you can do is just try and catch your opponent off guard. Yeah, or or whack the ball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh what a great save. Oh, oh, my goodness. Did you see that, ladies and gentlemen? Yaro pulls his striker back and then turns it into a goal. Wow, what a move. It seems like neither player wanted biscuits there, but it didn't matter at all because Yaris is very calm, collected, and gets that goal straight in there. Filippo's hand's a little shaky, yeah? Perhaps a little bit, yep. um, but I'm sure that'll change as we progress through these matches. But at the same time, I've seen him play that way the entire day. Like, I was watching from mm -hmm. the stands, and I saw that the, the, underneath the table, his hands were always... So maybe that's just like a, a thing that's common for him, and that's how yeah. he normally plays. Maybe, but again, we're seeing two biscuits off the field here, and it's all down to the player's yeah, skill. Yeah, not biscuit players, really. No, absolutely it's, not. Uh, they say get those up. All right, Filippo now diminishing the lead to a, a one point lead. Yaro, 3 2. Yaro to serve strong side, backhand off the far wall. And again, we're just seeing these biscuits fly off the pitch before we even have a chance to have any effect pitch, on the game. That's a great British word. Yeah. There you go. We're down to one biscuit already. Both players quite comfortable just. Going so mano when, mano. when there's one biscuit, the, really the only thing that you can do. All right, point for Yaru. We got a 4 2 lead. But when there is one biscuit, the only thing you can really do is put that on the other player's side so that you can try and like 
bank the ball off of it mm -hmm. to just mess with it, mess with their head a little bit yep. to deflect it into the goal. Absolutely. Oh man, we almost see an ace from Filippo. Yeah, yeah, I think when you're hitting a biscuit with the ball, you see players sometimes making a mistake of following the biscuit and not the ball, and then that's where the mistake is made. Filippo takes a biscuit, but as we've seen, biscuit's not a factor in this game. Neither player seems to be all concerned at all by the fact that there's biscuits anywhere oh! on the field. Round the goal, round the goal. So they answer back to one another. Yep. We got a we got a corner play by Yaru. Again, Yaru up 4-2 in this match. Both players are righties. Yaru with the slight advantage being that the 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 far side. Oh! Look at that, we see yeah. Filippo lose a biscuit and also score a goal. Maybe that biscuit was distracting. It's the strength of the biscuit. Yeah, it can't be underestimated. I've, I've, I've seen I've seen Filippo take a biscuit. Oh, wow. but it doesn't matter. Yeah. He comes back from behind. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody loves a comeback more than the, the class players because when you are down and you can come back, it, it, it really says something. Yeah, and uh, have you ever really felt like you're really behind and then come back from it? How does that feel? I, 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 ecstatic. It, uh, it, you got to keep the momentum going. So we'll see if Filippo is able to do that here. Yeah. Plays the biscuit, gives Yaru an angel. Yeah, but and some... we see it go around the world off the back of Filippo's class. And he, Filippo loses the biscuit, regains it. Yeah, I mean, we've seen many angels throughout the tournament so far. Oh, there we go, Filippo, look at that! Three unanswered points, and now Filippo takes the lead, making it 5-4 on Yaru. You can see the concentration on his face. He's looking directly at the ball at all times. There, there's no chance Oh, there. look at that straight shot, almost an ace, oh. and he class. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first 5-5 five, five point. Yeah, it absolutely this is. This is the Kevin. first 5-5 five, five point we have seen in the semifinals. Yep. And Both they, players on edge. And you Filippo see, trying yeah. to get that ball just right for the serve. Can't get it. You can see that he's shaking just ever so slightly. Yeah, he's going to go to the other side. He's going to go strong side. Playing with that. He plays with that sleeve. One of the only players to do that. Um, probably so he doesn't like scuff up his elbows on the table. Yep, it seems to be working out for players. So oh, far. goes with a straight shot. Bounces out. Just not enough finesse. Yeah. Off the back of the class referee producing a, a new ball there perhaps it's kind of like baseball if the ball hits the dirt you got to get a new ball Absolutely, right yeah yeah Ooh, no one likes dirty balls <laughs> very very close yes. oh yeah. man what do we see here yaru germany taking a one nothing lead in terms of the set over italy to be honest, that's quite surprising. I was expecting a stronger play initially from Felipe. I I agree. I agree. We may be witnessing an upset here. Happens. You know. The, you know. The big thing about Clask is uh, when you get to these high levels, everyone's about the same skill, and it comes down to who can handle the pressure and the nerves most. Oh, absolutely. And you can see already Felipe is on the back foot with biscuits in his field, goals very nearly being scored. It seems like there's an issue with the ball. Yeah. Um, ball's got cancer. Yep. What uh, do you know? <laughs> it seems both players were quite unhappy with it, so looks like the referee will produce a new ball. I'll take this one. okay. I think we'll have... Ready? All right, so we reset. I don't really know what happened there. Uh, we'll have to like talk to the players, maybe. Yeah, it's probably something mentioned in the interview later. Uh, again, biscuits off the board. This is this is this is probably the least biscuit game we've we've witnessed of yeah, the entire be. series here. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of biscuits being played during the group stages, but right now you just see both players going at it. Yes. Yaru draws first blood. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yaru just being very oh, aggressive there. Oh, Yaru draws second blood. Very aggressive. Just, you can barely keep up with the pace he's, of that he's, ball. He's using those. He's using those biscuits as like not not as like trying to stick them to flip, but using them to bank the ball off them. I yeah. mean, these players are angular players. They're not. They're not biscuit players. They're not trying to make the other person class. But then again, when aren't you trying to make the other player yeah. class? You know. 
but by the looks of that play, you can see that uh, Yara was... All right, we're witnessing a little biscuit play. <laughs> Filippo doing a great job avoiding the biscuits and answers back with a goal. I think in uh, in today's terms, they call that a clap back. A clap back. Yeah. yeah. That's a new one for me, but I like it. Or maybe in Britain they call it chirping. Chir I don't know. But uh, we see Filippo here chirping back at Yaru, chirping. making this a 2-2 game. We have an exciting game. Yaru bounces one out of the class, and so does Filippo. Yeah, you can see right now the points uh, being scored back and forth in rapid succession. Neither player seems to be having a, a solid strategy. It's just very frantic at the moment. Simon, I have a question. Are, are you even a Clask fan, bro? Like, I, you're not getting excited over these. Like, you're just very... This is about as excited as any British person gets about anything. <laughs> All right, just making sure because, <laughs> man, like, I'm over here. This is... Oh! See what I mean? Look at that! Filippo making it a 3-2 game, one-point lead. It's a great game. I'm not going to like it, but you, you think you, you expect too much out of the British. Yeah. I think it's just because you guys are a monarchy, we, we expect more, but hey, that obviously didn't work out. We had to go do our own thing. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> oh, almost oh, the class point. What was that? What yeah. happened there? Well, it was uh, it's a two-biscuit play by the look of it, and the ref Oh, okay, so so the, the biscuit was on. Yeah, just for um, a moment, but well, that's Well, that's, uh, that's a great call by the referee there, because honestly, if that was me in that spot, I, I would have, it was all in one motion, I would have just said play on. Yeah. So referee making a great call there. Absolutely. They've been very strict on the rules so far in the tournament and uh, making some stellar calls. Filippo having one biscuit behind the class there. That can be dangerous, because if you play one off the side and into that biscuit, it gives it an awkward bounce and almost makes it bounce in. Uh, we, we see that Yaru is it has bounced a couple in and out. That's three in the yep. before I did. While I've been talking, that's three, four. Yeah, Filippo managed to shake that biscuit, though. But he, and he just went and grabbed one. the one. That was a smart move. He went Very. and grabbed the one behind the class, eliminating it, the chances from it, like, going in and play, uh, being a factor in this yeah. game. And you can see Filippo even playing to himself to get that point. Oh, right look at that. Look at that. We got a 5-2 game. Filippo says, I'm coming back with a vengeance. Absolutely. He's and ain't nothing points. getting in my way. It's like almost that first game upset him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's got five points on the board. He's out to prove something. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, they're looking at balls again. Yeah, it seems to be perhaps a defect with one of the balls. They just want to make sure that everything's fair and perfect. Referee examining the ball. Uh, Filippo says hi to his mom, I believe. Great. <laughs> By the way, it's my mom's birthday today, so happy birthday, uh, Penny Reader, if she's watching or listening. All right, and we're back to the game. 5-2, Filippo. Biscuit in the corner. Two biscuits in the middle. Yeah. And one biscuit off the table, two biscuits off the table now, it's down to and it's skill. down to an angular goal game, and Filippo takes it. Yeah. We have a 6-2 win over Yaru, and we're going to a game three. Now, uh, hey, Simon, if you had to put money on this game three, who would you put it on? I'm going to go with Filippo. Uh, I was hoping you were going to say Yaru, because I was going to bet you. Because uh, I feel like uh, Filippo really like got caught some momentum. So I tell you what, if you give me odds, I'll still bet you. No, I'm not going to do that live on the air. But... <laughs> all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. All right. Yaru set the score. We hear uh, Italian Class Association President Daniel uh, cheering on his player. Oh, wow. And, man, Filippo takes an early biscuit point. Well, we've not seen biscuit points in this game very no, often. No, has that been the first one? Uh, I don't think it's the very first one, but it's very rare so far. Yeah. Like I said, both players just really working on those angles and just really fast, aggressive play. You know what the you know what both of them are really good at is just constantly staying moving and playing a great defensive game. Like, you, 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 you have to kind of like, uh, I call it back trapping. Back when you, trapping. When, when the ball gets behind kind of like the cluster, you hit it backwards really forcefully. Mm -hmm. So if it even does have a chance of going, to, you knock it out. And both players shot. have a very great back defensive game. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what so really- see, We just saw it there. He yeah. knocked the ball over the class, basically. It's what separates the champions from the other people in this tournament is a lot of people hesitate when it gets that far back. That's right, short. or that close to the class. Yeah. They, they just either watch it or they freeze. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Yaru with a 2-0 lead. Filippo not even on the board yet. 
That doesn't mean he's out right now, Kevin. He's a very strong player, and he's I, I so agree far. with you. We've seen, uh, we saw him come back last game. Yeah. Oh, and he gets, wow. ooh, loses control, regains control, and oh, wow. we have a class. That's the first class of this game. It is absolutely. And it is I, yeah, I don't think, honestly, I don't think that was a nerves class. I just think that that was a, like, both players, <laughs> though maybe a little shaky, have not been. Nervous. Uh, no, there, uh, there was a lot. Maybe going they are on. nervous, but they haven't showed it. Yeah, there was a lot going on during that point, and I think it just kind of a moment's distraction. All right, look at that. He's right back in it. He answers back with two unanswered goals. We have a two-two game, folks. And wow, what a what a great game. Yeah, I've got to say, Yarrow is usually stronger when he's playing a biscuit game, and we we yet to see that from him. All right, so both players with the biscuit. We have a middle biscuit, oh, and go. what a great play by Yaru. Uh, I like to call that a follow the leader. When you hit that middle biscuit or any biscuit and push the ball right behind the biscuit. Yep, because then you have a choice to make. Do you defend against the ball and, or accept the biscuit? And that's right. And right there, he already had a biscuit, so he had a pretty easy choice to make. Yep. All right. We got a 3-3 game. There you go. Filippo just unfazed by the last point. He's quite confident in how he wants to approach this Filippo match. drying his hands off. I, I think the, the nerves are getting to him a little bit, but it doesn't really show. See just a, a bit of back and forth right now, but that biscuit play oh, is really coming Oh, look at that. In. He plays a double, a, a ball into a double biscuit there. Oh, around the rim, and he tried. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh wow. wow. Wow, we are just, we just <laughs> saw like five plays that we couldn't even call out fast enough yep. in order to. So I hope you're watching, ladies and gentlemen, because this is, this is a great point. Yeah, this is probably the best match so far we've seen out of the group stages. Now, if you were Filippo, that's exactly, I was going to say, that's exactly what I'd do. If I was Filippo, I would play that ball back into the corner where the biscuits are. Now he gives Yaru an angel. Oh, it, Yaru bounces one out of the class. Yeah, Yaru is just on the attack right now, not giving Filippo any chance to come back. That angel saves him right there. Yeah, it seems to be that... There's just... Ooh! <laughs> yeah. Wow. And right now, just slowing down the pace, calculating there you his go. next That's, move. Sometimes that helps, a little change of pace. Yeah. You know, make the other player, when you're when they're expecting something, throw them something a little unexpected. Absolutely. Sometimes the slowest balls are the easiest ones to score. Yeah, you know, like a, like a change-up in baseball. You know, you're, yeah. you're throwing the fastball, throwing the fastball, yeah. and then you throw a change-up. Yeah. Score a goal. You can see a lot of relief there on Yarrow's face as uh, that is a very hard fought point right there. Yep. Ooh, immediately. great save by Yaru. Yeah, immediately gave He, allow he allowed himself to take an angel and then saved it from a goal. And now we got two biscuits on the field, two on Yaru's side. Yaru making it a 5 3. This is game point here. It's... Filippo needs to score three unanswered points to stay in this tournament. Yeah, well, I think he has it in him, to be honest. Uh, we've seen him come back from worse. That's right, all right, one biscuit gone. As we said, biscuits not really a factor in this game. Filippo playing off the back wall, and then a biscuit, and then, oh, man, we got, there's a lot of action happening. Yeah. We had one player playing the, two players playing the biscuits, <laughs> another biscuit, like, biscuits have not been a thing, and then all of a sudden, this last point, it's like, holy cow. Yeah, I mean, that's what is, Oh, in and out. <laughs> That's what defines the play of a champion. They're able to switch up that momentum at any given moment that they choose. Oh, good defense by by Filippo there, guarding his class. Yeah. And oh. we have a point. Yeah. He's making a comeback, ladies and gentlemen. He ain't done yet. Yeah, Yaro just momentarily. Filippo says, don't count Italy out of this one. And that, that, again, with the biscuit play, like, out of nowhere. Oh, man. And unfortunately, we see a great match. Filippo being eliminated. Yaru advancing. And now here we're going to go to the interview. Look at that picture of Asger. And congratulations, Yaro. Sure. That was awesome. You're really sweating there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> was it a tough game or what? Yeah, totally. It was totally close. Yeah, I'm the lucky winner now. What kind of challenges did you encounter during the game? Only challenges. So he's Only playing so fast and, and so safely. And yeah, so, okay. it was really hard. 
What does it mean when you play safely? So it doesn't make easy mistakes. And yeah, so that's that's hard to play against. So he's a very tough oppo opponent, isn't he? Is. he? <laughs> what kind of improvements are you going to make to the semi-finals? Don't make some mistakes I did, but I don't know, it's it's easier said than done. You yeah. looked a little bit nervous in the beginning, were you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Philip Patu. Oh, well, what about you? What was the biggest challenge on the game? It's a challenge, it's incredible. It was an incredible match. Uh, you know, Yaro at Manchester one week ago. A very strong player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I lost, but he lost with the, one of the, of the best, so... So he doesn't need to feel bad at all. Um, well, what, what would you do differently if you had the chance to play again against... Sitchens. Uh, he would play uh, most with biscuits, with a little uh, white magnets. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, what about Yaro? Are you going to change your tactics to the semi-finals? Well, it de always depends on your opponent, so I don't know. I, I will have to see. And but You will be playing against Asker Granerud. Yeah, he's playing a lot with the biscuit, so I have to pay attention. What kind of opponent is he, in your opinion? I, I've never played against him, so I will see, but I think it's going to be hard. But I think now every game in the semi-finals will be hard. What kind of special skills do you have on the game? What are your strengths? Hard question. <laughs> uh, I think I have quite a good offense, so yeah. I'm good around on this game. Do you think you're going to win the semi final? Hope so. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Filippo, and good luck to you, Yaro, for the semi finals. Thank you. Finals are now over. We will be moving to the semi finals, and we only have four players left. Four of the best players, of course. And the next pair, let's call up to Jussi Rasanen from Finland. And his opponent, Thomas Preus from Poland. Count on three, we flick simultaneously. Three, two, one, and then you flick. Okay. Are you ready for flicking? Yeah. Three, two, one. You go first. Tomak okay. wins the flick. Yeah. Have a good game. Thanks. You see the hometown hero here from Finland himself. Okay. Finland also really good at hockey, believe it or not. Yeah. I'm not sure how much hockey will help him in a game this class. Uh, I would say that this game is like air hockey, mm. and therefore maybe there's something... Ah, uh, it's... Oh. See? See, look at that. I don't know if hey, he Hey, you is... know what? Just eat your words. I... Eat your words, Simon. I don't know if he is a hockey player himself, though. <laughs> he looks like a hockey player. Oh! Wow. Well, wow. There you go. Oh. All right, we're, out. we're off to a hot start. With the with the hometown hero Yusi, and we have an ace yep. answered back right by Koma. Some extremely from quick points right here, and uh, it seems like both. Ooh, what a what a great serve by Yusi! You see how he stuck him with the biscuit and regained the serve there. That's a that's a very tactical serve. Oh, he's just dancing around that biscuit right there. Oh my goodness, Koma taking two biscuits. Making it a 3-1 game. Okay. 
Tomac, a pretty solid player. I, I, uh, I, to be honest, I, I'm quite surprised that it's uh, it's off to a 3-1 lead this early. It, it seems to be a rapid succession of points so far, and whoa, there whoa. You go. he just makes one mistake. That was like a slow there. roller. Yeah. Sometimes you just try and play the ball too much and overshoot. Oh man, look at that two unanswered goals. Tomac must have heard us and he said, I'm gonna show <laughs> these guys. I ain't letting them dictate what's going on. So now you see trying to go for a biscuit but misses it with that ball. Yeah, yeah. surprising to see that he missed it that close to the uh, actual biscuit itself. It's definitely trying to get a strategy going but is failing to do so. Both players have been trying to play those middle biscuits and have been failing. Yeah. Oh, and we see a class. You know, the, the clask is the worst thing I feel because there's yeah. no one to blame but yourself. Absolutely. Um, and so I think that I think that plays on your psyche a little bit. Let's see if it, it let's see if it psychs out UC. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a lot of simple mistakes from UC at the moment, and that's perhaps what's causing so much trouble for him. But now we see Tomac with uh, two biscuits in his uh, uh, strong or weak side corner and that is that is a danger zone because it, you know those corners are like probably yeah well there we go see yeah. knock one off he takes a biscuit but now the biscuits are off he's safe to play the game how he chooses to play and wow what a comeback yeah. and i tell you what it is hot in this announcer's booth simon you can only imagine how hot it is out there well that's because my fiance is out there watching <laughs> okay fair enough well, we can see Thomas is looking to try and close out this first game right here, but uh, you see... Oh, he again. closes it out. Yeah. We got Tomac. It's Tomac, by the way. Tomac. Tomac, not Tomas. I do apologize. It's Polish, so you gotta... It's like a... Uh, I, don't, I don't know how exactly... You, I'm not... Uh, my father's Polish, but that doesn't mean that I can speak the language. Yeah, fair enough. Well, we see you see to uh, serve first of all, and... He's I don't looking... think Tomac likes the striker he's playing with here. He's gonna he's gonna sweep it off. No, he's not happy. He's gonna ask for a change. Alexander, the German Association president, the referee for this one with the white gloves on. And you see, looking to serve here, hoping to. There we go. That, that striker looks a lot smoother. Yeah, yeah what absolutely. You say? Absolutely. Smooth like butter. Oh, oh that goes to goal play. was smooth. It could make How about that? Difference. All right, we have an answer. You know, Simon, I I really want to know what gets you excited because I, I I would like to see like I would like you to tell us what gets you excited so when we see it we can hear your excitement about something. Like, In regards to class, yeah, uh, I've got to say when you see the biscuits flying, that's got to be the best moment because there's so much confusion and that's where you see the players really shine. And if you're unable to deal with that kind of chaos, there we go. Yeah. Then, uh, so so biscuit points are what really get points. you going. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So so we should because that biscuits is a British word also. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a. Hey! <laughs> get goes. excited, Simon. I'm, That's a biscuit point. I'm excited, Kevin. Uh, this is as excited as we get. All right. <laughs> it's probably because the weather over in the UK. It's it's uh, it really drains on them. So we have a three-one game. UC one, Tomac. Three, and he extends the yeah. lead to a three-point lead, making it 4-1 with an angle, an angle goal. Yeah, Yusu is in a lot of trouble right now. He needs to find an opportunity to get back in the game. He now. does, He's, uh, because he has to win this one to extend it to a game three. Yep. And so far, we've all seen... Uh, <laughs> well, looks like whoa, he's trying to whoa, tease the magnet whoa, out. Whoa, of the whoa look at that. Yusu's yeah. trying to pull one in on him. He I, says, I see what you're doing yeah. there, homie. Don't blame him. Take advantage of the situation. Yeah, that's what I would do. Oh, man. But it, it, Tomek almost answers back with a goal. Yep. And after all that effort, he still gains the biscuit. And both players with the biscuit now. Well, remember, this is this is UC's strong point here. Once he has a biscuit, he seems to... Yeah, exactly, it. see? Once he takes a biscuit, it's like, it's like, it's like biscuit energy for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good nutrition for you. Yeah. A lot of carbs in a biscuit. I think he's eating cauliflower biscuits, though. Okay. You know, not sugary biscuits. You see, gives to. Oh, look at that! Very oh, aggressive. Yeah, that. What? A, what a great move! I love doing that. You, 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 you set the ball into the corner and then try to play the biscuits at the opponent because the corners are the most dangerous spot. Yep. 
And this is where UC really shines in that biscuit play, just putting his opponent on that back foot. Oh, look at that. He, those biscuits are just fine. And now he's got the biscuit, so now we should see a solid game yep. from UC. It seems whenever he gets that biscuit, he, he starts to just play with a little more ferocity. Yeah, I mean, Tomac really needs to be careful of that biscuit in his goal, but it doesn't matter. We don't see it there. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter there. He, he, he shakes it off, shrugs it off, get, like, get that dirt off your shoulders, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But uh, UC to serve again, and he's got to assert some kind of control over this game right now, or it's all over. Yeah! Oh! Tomak very happy with that. Tomak very happy with that goal indeed, because he eliminates UC from the tournament, and now we're going to see them go to the uh, post-game interview. Yeah. Thomas, congrats. You will be going to the finals. That's awesome. You will see. Well played. Well played. I disagree. <laughs> Why is that? Tell me. What went wrong? Well, uh, my defense was not working this time. He got past my defense all the time. Okay. Um, you have come very far now. Are you starting to feel nervous before the finals? Not really. No? no? You're no. calm. But I think the calmness helps. Were you nervous, you see? I was more nervous than in, in quarterfinals, but not super nervous. Mm. But now you will be moving to the finals. Are you still going to keep on playing the same way that you have been of playing course, now? Yes. You're not going to change anything? Anything. Do you have many different tactics that you use against different players? Yes, of course. And uh, when I see. Uh, the player is uh, have good defensive. I try uh, another way to find. Uh, I would like to go, uh, score a goal. Yeah. What is your best skill that you have? Your strength? very offensive uh, game. And you see, what kind of opponent was Thomas to you? Uh, right now, in the last game, he was uh, extremely accurate, and he didn't do a lot of mistakes. Really strong. Have you been playing against each other before, or was this the first time? Do you want to uh, talk about Essen? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> in last year, uh, he beat me in the quarter, quarter final in Essen. So you see beat you in the quarterfinals? Yeah. Okay, was that as tight game as this was, or? Uh, to be honest, I don't remember, but he, he okay. got his revenge. Yeah. What was like the breaking point in the game for you? I think uh, my start uh, was very good and uh, I flow uh, because I uh, had a good start. It's a momentum game, so when you uh, get things right, then you just go with the flow and I, I felt like I, I couldn't get going on. Well, I honestly think that the game was awesome and very well played. So thank you both. Thank you, Yussi, and hope to see you again. And Thomas, congratulations and good luck to the finals. Thank you. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, this will be our last game of the semi-finals and we will be moving to the finals after this one. And our last players are Asker Granerud from Denmark. Welcome. And Jaroko from Germany. Good luck. All right, both players shake hands, and we're off to the races here, folks. Both players are going to flick off. Yaru flicks one right off the board, and Asger, I believe, uh, wins it with a five-scoring flick. Yeah, it's very rare that you see a flick with a five win anything. Ah, uh, well, this is true. So right off the bat, Kevin, before we see a point scored, who, who's your money on right here? 
I, well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, mm -hmm. and uh, it, I'm gonna say that I, I want my money to be on Yaru at this point. Sure. Asgard and I, we're we're kind of we're, we're kind of like frenemies. Frenemies. Like like when it comes to personal, we're we're, we're friends outside of the game, but yep. when it comes to the game, we. Uh, we, we, we rival, and there's some like witty banter back and forth. Okay. Well, I think if Yaru manages to get a biscuit play going, he stands a very oh, good chance. Look at oh, man, what, a, what an interesting play. He, the biscuit transfers from Yaru onto Asgur, yeah. and then Asgur misses a goal. I mean, that's the kind of psychological advantage that the biscuit offers. But you. then he makes the goal. Yeah. Sometimes the simplest shots are exactly what you need. All right, so now Asger up one nothing against Yaru from Germany, Denmark versus Germany, in this semi-final match. Asger does a great job defending, bouncing the, uh, giving a lot of backward, like we talked about that. It's 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 like the backwards trap momentum, so that you you don't score the goal, but you hit it hard enough so that it bounces out. Absolutely. And it seems both players just really trying to find a way around the side of their opponent. You know, that is the trick. The trick is to get it behind your opponent, because once you get it behind them, that's when you start to create opportunities for yourself. Whether it's, uh, in, a big part of it is getting it off the back of the striker for the opponent. Absolutely, yes. And so if you can get it behind your opponent, then you just open up the door of opportunity. Yep. And you can see Yaru just there was in a, a spot above her as. Uh, oh, Yaru with a straight shot. We don't we haven't seen many of those. This uh, this uh, elimination bracket. Yeah, uh, it's usually because you see how Yaru is moving his piece uh, in circular motions. It's very good defense. Yes, he's a side to side guy. Yeah, very good. But uh, it didn't offer him any defense against that kind of shot there from Asgur. So we'll see how effective it is going forward. Oh, he splits yeah. the difference with those biscuits. Yeah, but and he takes one, puts it on Asger. Yeah. Yaru now, 1-2 with that goal. Asger circles around, gives it a serve, plays it off the backboard to defend, and we're seeing a, he's, he's juggling it. And that's what that, it, I think that's what you call it, when you, when you bounce it off the board and play with it, juggling. Yaru did not want to pick up that biscuit just there. He's no, in danger. Now he's got to stay away from the clasp yeah. because you can't. Now, if this was me, I always take and I I, I, I pick up the biscuits out of my clutch. Like, not pick them up on my striker, but I flick them out. There's yeah. a strategy you can use to do that. Just, I don't I, I don't like angels. And because I don't like to pick them up like this. Like, see, he almost picked it up yeah. and he gives himself he's, an angel again. It's right back in there. It, it, that, that, bi that biscuit does not want to leave the clasp. Oh, very nearly a goal there from uh, Yaru. And Yaru makes it a 2-2 game. He takes a deep breath, exhales. Both players relieving a little bit of stress there. You can just see the tension on their faces. Look at that. It's like a, 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 a both players stone face, like a World Series of Poker match. Oh, absolutely. Normally you would see Asuka with a very big smile on his face, and right now you know he knows. He's serious, yeah. Yeah, he knows what's at stake. He's not, both players, not playing around, picks up the uh, biscuit out of his class and takes a goal, giving Yaru a 3-1 lead for a, a, a one a one point lead now. Oh wow, <laughs> right off the bat, that yeah. biscuit's not even touched in the middle. Not very immediately sometimes. What do you call that in Britain when you have your tea but you don't touch your biscuits? Yeah, <laughs> just a cup of tea. Oh, just, it just, yeah. I thought that there was something cooler than that. No, we're not that cool in it. <laughs> All right, we got a, wow, look at that. This is a four now, unanswered yeah. points by, by Yaru. And Asuka's just trying to gain some kind of momentum here. But, oh, but Yaru, whoa, look wow. at that. Two, I've never seen a player nice. eliminate two biscuits in one sly move. And then he goes off the back of his striker and into the class. He doesn't allow Yaru to gain that momentum back and takes advantage. No, of no, it. that's good. He needed he needed to break that momentum in order for him to even stand a chance because otherwise, you, you get that going and it, it's unstoppable. Asker takes wow. one, break dances away. Yeah, tries to clear it, but it doesn't quite work out for him. And now he's in trouble with two biscuits on his field. He does it, it, with one on him. Yes. Oh, but he eliminates the other one, he's... trying to play that other one onto Yaru's yeah. side. Even with a biscuit on him, he's quite happy to play the biscuits. 
That is the one thing. Oh, there we go. Asger leveling the playing field. That's the one thing I will say about Asger in relation to myself. Both of us are very, uh, we love to play the biscuits and not afraid to play them when they, when, even when we have one. Yeah, you've got to show your opponent there's no advantage, Dave. Yeah, you mean business. Yeah. You know, it's almost it's almost like a psychological warfare at that point too. Like, hey, I I don't care. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, it seems like Gary's just really struggling to get this last point secured to close out the first match. He, he is, he is, he is. And look at Asger trying to go for the pickup. Yep. Look at I did. This wow. is the first time we've seen that. Finally, yeah. someone picks one up out of the glass. He just completely. Asger, <laughs> oh, Yaru puts it right back on him. Wow, what a move. Yeah, those are the moves that. Asger says, players. get that out of here. I'm done with it. I'm gonna. We're just gonna play for a goal here. Wow, and both players just fiercely throwing that ball at each other and just waiting for the other to make it. Whoa! Mistake. Circles around and yep. out. That was a that was a hard circle too. Like that Absolutely. should have been a goal. You can see Asger is in full control right now. Yaru. He is. Yaru is on the defensive. Yep. Look got, at that. He can't even it, that, that was the first time. Well, he can't even regain control of the ball right now. Asger is controlling the game, oh, yeah. but Yaru comes in clutch yeah. when it when it when it needs to. And really, that's what Clask is about. You can dominate the whole game, but if you pick and choose your battles and you choose them right, you can dominate and control the whole game. Absolutely. And that's what you need to do. Yeah. It's like, almost like you let your opponent feel like they're in control, mm -hmm. and then you do a little switch up, and <laughs> oh, sorry. It's me, buddy. Yeah. Well, even with the loss, Asuka seems quite happy, and uh, he's ready to go in the second match. I, you know, you know what I would love to see, Simon. I would love to see some back-to-back. -back. Oh wow. man, Yaru! You don't see that kind of mistake. No, before. no, we haven't seen it this entire tournament. Not like that, we haven't. No. I would love to see some back-to-back -back aces, like one-player aces. Another player answers back with an ace. Yeah, I don't, it's very rare at this level of play. I think all players are prepared for that serve and they know how to handle it. It mostly revolves around just trying to find that weakness in the backfield and Asgard it. loses the biscuit. Oh, oh, and then we have an even yeah. game here. Simon, what's the what's the what do you remember? I'm gonna give you a quiz. What's the what's the set score here? The set score is uh, one to Yarrow and zero to uh, Asgard. Just checking. Yeah. I'm glad you're paying attention. Yeah. Were you paying attention? Was I that was. your way I... of gaining the information? No, no, no. I was paying attention. I just wanted to make sure that you were. Sure. There we go. We got a <laughs> two-one. One-point lead now. Yaru over Asger. Remember, Asger has to win this, according to Simon, <laughs> in order to push this to a game three. He's trying to play a very aggressive game here. Oh, I thought he was going to have three angels. Yeah. We, we're yet to see three biscuits in any position. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen a three angel game. Yaru extending his lead to two. He's got to start feeling confident. With now, that game now if you're Asger in this scenario, what do you do? <laughs> To be honest, I would just start playing as frantically as possible. Not quite like that. That, that, that was pretty frantic. <laughs> yeah. was, would you? That, well, I would you did remaining. exactly what you said. You played as frantically as possible, and you saw how that turned out. So I'm glad that you're not playing in the tournament. That's why I'm in the commentary booth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you're just one of the talking heads. Yeah. But uh, Asuka, just, I think he needs to slow the pace of the game down a lot. He's a very decisive player. And when he controls the pace of the game, that's where he really shines. It seems to be that for like all class players, it's he who is in control or on the offensive seems to be the one that dominates the point. We're seeing a lot of back and forth here. Yeah. That was a great play by Yaru. You know, the biscuit doesn't matter. Just go pick it up, yeah. get it out of the way. We see him rim one out on Asger. Yeah, and in some situations, that biscuit on the player can help deflect the ball. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does not matter. He's one point away from victory right now, Kevin. He is. And uh, almost, I, I mean, almost a flawless victory on this po on this set. Yeah. Uh, or, or match point, I should say. 
We haven't seen a 6-0. We haven't seen in the in the semis or quarters. We haven't wow. seen. But there's an ace. We just talked about aces very briefly. All right, now we're going to see both players go to the post game or match interview. Wow, that was awesome. Well done, boys. Well done. Congrats, Yaro. That went well. Tell me about your feelings now, right at this moment. How do you feel? Yaro, go first. So, yeah, obviously I'm feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. It was a hard game, but... Yeah. I see you're feeling excited. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, for the <laughs> final. You're in the final now. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge thing. Uh, and you, Oscar? Yeah, I, I had hoped to make it better than last year. I made top four this year and I made top eight last year, so I'm happy. And I was I was afraid of playing Yaro because he's good defensively with the magnets and getting them out of the way, which is one of my strengths. So so I knew that it could be tough for me to score basic points on him. So. Mm. What kind of opponent was Oscar to you? Well, as I imagined, he, he played a lot with the, the magnets. Yeah, but luckily it wasn't yeah, the dis deciding thing in the game, so, yeah. Oscar, what is your next goal after this? Uh, but I, I think that uh, my, my chance of winning it was perhaps last year, and now people are getting better and better and better, and, and in five years to come there will be these 10 years old who have played it for, for every day in their, in their kindergartens and schools, etc., and we will stand no chance. So, uh. But you can keep on practicing. <laughs> yes, How? sure, I will. How often do you practice? Uh, not, not a lot, every second week or so. Uh, last year I played every day in, in the office, and now not anymore, so uh, yeah. What about you, Yara? It depends a bit, but um, yeah, so the last weeks, actually, I didn't play so much because I didn't have the time and before um, I had weeks where I played like four times or so. Yeah, depends a bit. Are you gonna keep on playing the same way in the finals as you played now or are you gonna change or adjust your tactics? Well, I, I played two times against Tomak, so yeah, I know how strong he is and yeah, I will just try to focus on my game and don't think about him. And you're not feeling nervous before the finals? It's getting better, but still I'm nervous, yeah. So you have played against Thomas before? Yeah, I played two times against him last weekend in Manchester. Okay, have you played against him in some tournament before, or is this the first yeah, in, time? In, in the um, tournament last, last weekend in Manchester. So what will be the biggest challenge to play against him? Yeah, to keep calm, because he does, doesn't make any mistake. Yeah, so that's really hard to play against. Wow, awesome. Thank you so much and good luck to the finals. And thank you. thank you, Oscar, and hope to see you next year. Thank you. And now I would like to invite to my couch Klask Daddy Mikkel Bertelsen. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Mikkel Bertelsen, you are the inventor of this fabulous game. Yes. Please. <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear the story behind this game. How, how did you come up with this game? Uh, yeah, it's a long story, but uh, the beginning was uh, I was to a party. And then the day after the party, I had a few hangovers. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm hungover, my, my head is a bit weird <laughs> uh, when I'm good. If it's good hangovers. Okay. But so um, I get a little bit creative when I'm hungover. So, uh, yeah, then I had some cardboard and some magnets from another invention and uh, yeah, and I would like to do something for my family, a family game. A family game. So, yeah, and then I, the, one of the magnets got stuck. Oh, I thought, oh, that could be fun. And uh, then it went over the edge, flask. Okay, so, and yeah. And then in the end of the day, I actually 
had this small game in cardboard, and then I then I made a, what do you call it a demo model, which I lent to my friend, and um, he tried it and he liked it a lot. So then I thought, let's go. How many prototypes did you have before this version? Did you uh, make many games before you made this one? A few, a few. There has been some few modifications. In the beginning, the hole was all the way through, actually. But I thought that it's gonna, the pieces would, the pieces are flying away in uh, in the beginning, so it would lose even more. But it it was actually a, also fun because it gave you a bit more shock when it mm -hmm. clasped. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but actually there wasn't that much change from the beginning. How long did it take to make the game? How long did it take? Yeah, took? to make it. Uh, days, weeks, months? Days, weeks, weeks, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And um, um, how did Clask games start to spread around the world? Uh, in the beginning I sold them myself from a web shop and then I, my wife said to me, hey Megan, this is also a, a bar game, it could work as a bar game. And then I called Carlsberg and they, they would like to do some, they bought some games of me, which I spread out to bars in Denmark, or they did. And then it, uh, then it went good. And then I, um, I, I won a small, uh, what do you call it, contest in, in Copenhagen, Denmark. And then I met these uh, wonderful Finns that I uh, that I have that have done all this today, and they have uh, sold a hell of a lot of class games <laughs> and made a wonderful marketing job for it. So that's How, why it's so. Yes. How long did it take before it came to Finland? Actually, the the same day as the the contest in Denmark. Um, I made a like a handshake with the Finns, kind of, and then from there on it went on. Like mm. uh, then the production went to China instead of Denmark and stuff. So were you surprised by how popular the game be became? Yeah, I'm very surprised when I'm looking at these tournaments here. I'm my heart is beating so hard. It's uh, it's amazing to see the players that are like so into it. I'm so dedicated. It's uh, it's wonderful to see. Uh, it's and also the, the this whole Clask family. It's it's wonderful to see them and uh, some of them are I have seen a few times. So uh, and it's, it's just a fantastic weekend. A weekend like this. Why do you think that the game is so addictive? What makes it so addicting? I think uh, the white ones are very good, uh, and also the thing in the hole. It makes it a bit more. At least it's maybe because I'm not that good at football and not any other sports actually. So for me, it was maybe also about to find a game that where you, where you don't need to have any like specific skills. You can actually everybody can play it mm. and be good know, at it. Do you know that in which country they play Clask the most? Where is it most I, popular game? I don't know actually, but France maybe, US. I don't know. So, what do you do for a living? Do you only make games, or what do you do? Uh, I only do this game classic thing now. I was a carpenter before, but then, then I was traveling a bit with the the Finnish guys and had a lot of fun. And uh, and then I thought to myself, now I'm gonna all in with this, and so I sold my company and took the luck with the Finns, and then yeah. Are you still going to modify this game, or what are you going to do next? Uh, we have a, uh, a four-player version coming. It's a round one, so that you can call a bit of a modifying. Uh, and I, we also have some other ideas by making bigger class games, uh, class game as a, as a couch table and stuff. And then, and then I also do some class games for, for companies where I brand the the surface with the with the, with the company name. But is it still the same game, even though it's bigger? Yeah, it's also it's, it's always the same game. Uh, oh, of course, the round one is round, but and it's four player. Mm. Uh, but the same. Same rules. Same rules uh, ish, and same pieces, same white ones, and also with the big ones. That's also going to be the same. So, how do you feel tonight after watching all these semi-finals? and people playing, what does it 
feel like and how do you feel about the games? It makes me super proud. I'm, I'm very happy. I, it's a wonderful feeling and especially because these are wonderful people and I'm looking all looking forward to have fun with them tonight and it's, it's wonderful. Uh, Yes, and the players are very talented people, so... Yeah, exactly. And, who do and you think is going to win? Yeah, it's very fun to see how it was in the beginning and uh, and how people are getting better and better. They are finding new ways of scoring and it's, uh, it's amazing to see. Thank you, Mikkel. You are welcome. We will move to the finals. Thanks. Good luck. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be moving to the finals. And now at this point, we only have two players left. So let's call up the players. We have our first finalist, who is from Poland, Thomas Preus. Welcome. <laughs> And against Thomas, we'll be playing our second contestant, who is Jaroko from Germany. Welcome. <laughs> and good luck. All right, Simon. Hey, while well, uh, while well they're going, why don't we uh, why don't we crack into this and do a little Finnish cheers? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. All right. There we go. As they say in Finnish, kitos. Kitos. Uh, both players messed up the flick off. They're going to reflick. Uh, Simon, you may not have heard him cheers because he's drinking tea. He, uh, it's a very British thing. Uh, you know, Brits and their tea. We had a, in America. We had a big tea party for them mm -hmm. before the Revolutionary War. It worked out pretty well for you guys. <laughs> that it did. That it did. All right. So we're going to get be off here. Uh, Ola is. Yeah. Best of three. You heard it, folks. Ola is the referee for this one. Finnish native himself. On your right, you have Yaruko from Germany. And then on your left, you have Tomak Pruis. Simon, who's your money on? Uh, I'm going to go with Yaro on this one. Yaro, all right, I'm going to go with Tomak. You, you want to you wanna throw five on it? I'll throw a five on all it. Right, Are we so talking euros, dollars, or pounds? Um... Pesos. Pesos. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk euros. Euros. So talk euros. You heard it here first. Um, Kevin, just Kevin, the inaugural class world champ, has five on Tomac, and Simon, British announcer bro, has five on Yaruko. We have uh, Tomac playing with the ball in his corner. That almost sounds bad. Almost, but. He seems to be okay. He's very comfortable right now. He's not yeah, showing any signs. Yeah, thankfully his mom didn't walk in on yeah. him. <laughs> oh, did you see that? He had both the biscuits snapped up. I've yep. never seen that. There's a very unique position for the biscuits to be in. You know, that's the cool thing I love about Clask is that no matter how many times you play, I mean, I've probably played 2,000 times, and it, you always see something different. Yeah. Both players again playing the angles. Biscuits are out of contention, except for the two that are in Yaru's class. He could still connect them. Oh, the angel they save. save him. Angel yeah. save, and they, they save him there. Wow, and it was saying right there, Tomaka is almost scoring against himself. Oh, he picks one up! He does. He picks one up! And we see uh and we see one go off the board, and we see the ball go off the board. Tomak is to choose his side. He asks if, if Yaru is ready. He says he's ready, serves. And they're off, folks. They're playing angles again. Oh, another angel save. Yeah. I mean, for the first point of the first game, this is shaping up to be a pretty good final. It is, yeah. You know, um, one time Mikkel and I were at a convention, and we had 10 minutes before the convention, and during that whole 10 minutes, no one scored a point. And we had to call it 0-0 zero, zero game because it was the longest point in history. Yep. And we might be witnessing that right here, folks. 
Well, I don't think that's, either... that's three times the ball has gone off. Yeah, I don't think either player would want to call it there as a zero-zero game, though. They're oh no, 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 no! They wouldn't call it. But I'm saying this might this might be in contention for yep. the longest point ever. But it's not nope. because Tomac takes and scores one off of a side backboard goal. Yeah, but Yarrow Bear just pretty much unfazed by the fact that he's lost the first point. He knows there's a long way to go. Well, that's 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 how you got to play if you're going to be a, a world champion. I get wow, I've never we haven't seen this many loss uh, balls off the field this entire game. I mean that's four. Yeah. For this, this is just this game though. You can see the kind of strength that the players. Oh, have. and a biscuit point yeah. to make it one-one. Yaru, very technical. If you can play, God, I love those. If you can play faster than your opponent can see, then uh, you're in a very good position. Five. Yeah. Hey, should we take an over and under bet as to how many times we're going to see the ball go off the table? That could be fun. Well, there you go. Immediately, Yari just scores Yari straight Yari scores into one, but fixes his 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 score denoter there because he moved it one extra. <laughs> That's a gentleman. Yeah, he's getting right ahead there. of himself a little bit. Ooh. Ooh, some very careful and deliberate play scene from Yari there. You know, one thing I've noticed about Tomak when he put he. He, like, one of my personal strategies is always, well, he loses a biscuit, that's great, and puts one in. Yeah. But one thing I've always noticed about Tomak is when there are biscuits on the other players, he doesn't play the ball towards them that often. That's something mm -hmm. I always try to do. There's six. There's six, so, yeah. Do we, uh, do we, have, we should have taken an over and under. This is <laughs> ridiculous. We're seeing a two-all draw at the moment, and neither player showing any signs of Angel weakness. Angel save with a biscuit collected. Tomac goes for a, goes for a straight one. It looks like it Yarrow wants to get rid of that biscuit if he can. He he just had an opportunity. He's really eking it out. But very just controls the board as much as he can, making sure that Tomac has no opportunity to respond. Man, what an what an intense Ooh, oh, and great very good defensive shot. move and it's a so the only biscuit point available wow. doesn't come into contention because Tomac yep. puts one in it's... off the backboard off the back of Yaru's striker. Yeah, it takes just a second of loss of concentration to lose a point. That, that's the that's the that's the crazy ridiculous beauty of this sport is that you have you have to be concentrating all the time because there's so much happening. You have the biscuits to worry yeah. about, especially when they're not on your side. And you have the ball that you're trying to score. And then you have to watch out for the class. But at the same time, the game is so simple. Yeah. And it just goes to show there. So simple. Either make a biscuit point, score a goal. Yeah. And we're, we're seeing goals scored by each player. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at six frets on the board at a time, and it's not easy to deal with. see Yaru with two biscuits on his field he picks up one trying to uh, send it back to his opponent but unfortunately oh wow. yeah. great play off the side wall off the back wall uses that biscuit as a point I was just saying how he doesn't do that and then he goes yeah. and does it that's it, great he goes to show us the level of a champion right there is able to surprise you at all times oh wow this is a cider <laughs> did you not know? I did not know. <laughs> Surprise. 4-3 game. Yar uh, Tomac playing with that biscuit behind his, puts it behind his class. And now both players making swipes at the biscuit, but missing. <laughs> He's very comfortable at the moment, though. Uh, even both players are very comfortable. Yeah. I mean, most people would start to choke, kind of. Ah, move look at away, that! But that's it. He goes Love straight. Love it. Into Crowd the is going wild. Crowd's yeah. getting into it now. Absolutely. I like that. It's the level of play that they came to watch. You know, that's what I love about Class 2 is that the, the, the crowd can really, you know, because they can understand it. You know, you have other sports like basketball, professional football. Maybe you played in high school, isn't that? But this is a sport that. All players, regardless of skill level, can get started in and understand. Look at that, rips yeah. one out. There's so, so very few simple rules to Clask that you don't need to know the offside rule. Right, right, exactly. It's very easy to learn. and it, You don't need four referees. Yeah. You it, could if you wanted. <laughs> if you really want. But, but it almost transcends language. And you know, man, we don't have time for today, but, I, but it does transcend language. I have a very cool story about that. And he closes and out the Tomac first game. takes it to a game two where he is now up one game to none. So 
Tomac taking the first game, and Yaru is going to have to look for something special here if he wants to stop. Well, <laughs> well. thankfully that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> Happened before the serve, so he needs to reset. He's just he's just testing out his striker. Yeah, he's making sure he's got every opportunity available to him. He's not quite happy just yet. He, it might be the board. You know, earlier you piece. talked about transcending language. We were in Sweden at the Comic Con one time. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to play, explain, and work with these players that pl were playing class that were deaf. And wow. I didn't know sign language. I didn't know Swedish. They couldn't lip read me. So that's, I, I really do believe that that is the beauty of class. Is how simple it is. We see Yaru taking a 1 0 lead with an, with an angle goal. Yeah. Yaru trying to play with that biscuit, puts it over and gets it back on his side. So both players with the biscuit on their side now. Yaru with the biscuit on his striker. Tomak not really looking to make a, an advantage out of that at the moment. He's more no, concerned. he's just leaving that biscuit go in his corner. Yeah. You know, and that's it. That's just a very dangerous place for the biscuit to be. Like if I was Yaru, I would be playing that that ball towards the corner because it can bounce off very yeah. oddly. Yeah, you can't predict it in that kind of sense. And now, Simon, you and I played Classic earlier today. How did that turn out? Yeah, I think uh, it was pretty close, right? You were your own worst enemy. Uh, well, I think I beat you left-handed twice. You did, but uh, you did manage to score against yourself quite often. So oh, how skillful right. could you claim to be, Kevin? <laughs> Yar look at that Yaru trying to barrage the goal of Tomax. Not working. Yeah. Again, see, look at there's that biscuit in the corner. Wow! Doesn't what even a use play. it. He circles around the ball before shooting, and then because Tomac has no idea where he's going. No, exactly. It's, he just, it's he, over. He, he he totally deked him out. Yeah. Wow! And Tomac just playing against himself just there. He's, he almost scored on himself. Yeah. yeah, he was almost his own worst enemy. Uh, Yaro just very calm and collected, almost scores that's a seven. point. seven. Yeah. I don't know if you're keeping track at home, ladies and gentlemen, but that's seven. And wow. Tomac is able to sink it and stick it in there, making it a one-point game. Oh, a dual pickup. Look at that. It's like they went on a double date. <laughs> See, now Tomac should be playing that. There you go. He tried, but he missed. Yeah, and Yaro's just being very careful. Tomac trying to force that ball into the corner, but... Oh, but he forced it into his own goal. Yeah. And sometimes you are your own worst enemy. Yep. Okay. Wow, and Tomac really trying to assert some kind of control and dominance. Ooh. Rims out the front. Yeah, it's a very aggressive game from Tomac so far. Wow. And there we go. Yaru has to maintain this lead and score three points in order to take this to a game three. Yeah, he's only halfway there for a victory, so... Uh, but he's more than halfway now. There you he's go. three quarters. <laughs> what, do, what do they call three quarters in, uh, in, in Britain? 75%. Well, <laughs> or like pence. <laughs> what? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, there we go. We've got Yaru really trying to come back from this. He's playing Ooh, Yaru very does a aggressive. Great job playing with that biscuit. It's. It looks like it's. No, it's pip side up, and he takes wow. it. Wow! What an aggressive. What a great move. Game. I don't know if he meant that, but it doesn't matter. Well, you can say that he did because that's what happens. And Yaru almost. So just... now Tomac has to has to score four unanswered goals. This is a tough spot to be in because you have no room to play with here. Yeah, you know, you mean, have to be on point all the time. Even with two biscuits in Yara's own goal, he seems to be asserting nothing but control on this game. He lost that first one, and now he's coming back with a vengeance. He wants to take this to a game three. But Tomac Oof. doesn't want to want to let it up that easy. The defense from... Oh! oh! That almost Will, looked like a clask, but it, I don't think it was. It. The ref doesn't yeah. call it. Wow. And wow, what a play. What a play. Some people might be upset by that. They might say it was a clask, but if the ref didn't call it, you know, then it's but that's a, that's the beauty. It's kind of like the good old American baseball mm -hmm. where there we don't go to instant replay. We let the ref or the players decide the game and yep. 
the ref went with not a class. Yeah. So we have to respect that. Yeah, they respect the game, they know the game, and that's how we have to go. All right, so now we're at a, we're at a final. Yeah. Game I'm, three. I, I'm going to say Yaru's going to take it. Judging I don't know. You know point. what? I'm just rooting for a 5-5 five, five point. Like, I want to <laughs> get into it. I want to I want to really lay into this right. and, just, and just get wild. Well, you can see Tomax has already got a biscuit on his uh, piece there and another one in the backfield. He's really avoiding that corner. Yaro could apply a lot of pressure if he chose. And he's trying to, but he's just not being accurate with yeah, it. Yeah, I think he's playing it too fast. He's not giving I Tomac agree with you. enough I, time. I 100% agree with you. You know, there comes that, that's a beautiful thing about class kids. You got to know when to put the brakes on and yep. when to give it the gas. But he does bring the biscuit out into uh, Tomac's Whoa, there, and he gets man. it. Gets him. He was just spinning yeah. there, spinning, spinning, spinning. And what do you know? Sticks sticks it to Tomac. Yeah, that disco ball of a biscuit. Disco Disco, it's a disco biscuit. It's a yeah, disco biscuit. Yeah, disco biscuit, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, oh, and Yaru man. just hot on the biscuit there and didn't even care. He's... Tomak's at the serve short side. He does that short side serve. Oh, and look at that result yeah. in a return with mm -hmm. another return into the goal. Yeah, it's deadly accuracy from Tomak there. And... Wow. Oh, we see an ace. He just barely touched the biscuit, yeah. which threw Tomak off. He wasn't able to adjust. Oh, well, I was really hoping for the for the for the return ace there. Yeah. I want to see that one time this tournament. Oof. And wow, immediate... Yaru playing the biscuits like it's nobody's Oof. business but his. And so very nearly scoring goals for both sides there. And oh, Tomac just plays man. himself. Tomac is in a is, he's in a dangerous spot now. Two points left for Yaru mm. before he wins and claims the Class World Championship crown. Tomac having to score. Five points. It doesn't have to be unanswered, but man, he's in a tough spot right now. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be feeling the pressure. Yaru's in a very comfortable position here, but he can't let up. I mean, Thomas is not going to allow him to. Oh, oh, he loses the biscuit. Wow. And then takes one in and out. Very wow, he nearly. really needed he that he needed that to not go yeah. in. Tomac just playing the ball there in the perfect position he chooses. He knows how he wants to play this game, but. Yaro just really not letting him get back in this. Uh, we can we can hear the clickety clack of the of the class board going back and forth. Wow. And there we, there go. we go. Tomak now ready to give up without a fight. Yeah, I'm not sure if you saw that's, that. That's the Polish eagle in him. Mm. You know, that's a, their national bird. And, well, I don't know if it's their national bird, but I know it's a Polish eagle <laughs> on the flag. There's a, a quick flicker of uh, doubt. Flickeroo. Yeah. That's I like that. Does uh, does it have anything to do with Dunkaroos? Yeah, the old possibly. childhood snack. <laughs> it's probably an American Dunkaroo. Did you did you have Dunkaroos? No, in, absolutely uh, in not. Oh, okay. Uh, All right, so let's get back to the game. So. Back to the game. We have a four-two lead. Yaru. Oh man, it goes for the straight shot. We haven't seen many of those, but he rips yeah. it out. Well, it's down to a single magnet, so it's all down to play a skill right now. Yep. Offense, it's, it's an offense-defense game. Who's got the better offense? Who's got the weaker defense? I'm going to give it to Tomac. I, I think Jaro plays an exquisite ma uh, magnet game, but uh, when it comes down to point-to-point -point shooting, Tomac's got him beat ever so slightly. And you can just see the aggressiveness in here. It's, it's Both not players wild. Playing aggressive. Look at that. Because, because Yaru is playing so aggressive, He's not sticking it. He's got to have a little bit of finesse. Ooh, and the that ref looked like will a class. What's the ref calling? Yep. He yep. calls it. It's a class, folks. Yep. There's a clear loss of control as a class. And you know what? Good move by Tomac because I think if he would have kept playing, the ref just would have de decided that no. Yeah. But oh, wow. what do we got? We got a game, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. We got a game. 4-4 four, four now. It's everything wow. to win and everything to lose. Yaru just yes, oh, immediately man. serves it back to him. So oh, I, I think I think we might see a five-five point here, we can and only I hope, hope we do because that man. Yeah, Yaru just quite concerned about the uh, missing biscuit there. Oh, okay. right, yep, yep, so. yep, yep. <laughs> you don't, don't want to play without a missing missing biscuit. Yeah, especially when it's your strength. And the crowd really getting into oh, it. Really that's takes it. it. All right, looks like I owe you five you do euros, Simon. Kevin, just shake your hand on that. An absolute pleasure commentating with you. It looks like Yara is extremely elated. Man, both players 
doing a phenomenal job playing. The confetti comes out. It's excitement. There's hugs. There's cheers. Yeah, referring Germany for... takes this one, though, folks. Mikkel to present the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new class world champion 2018, Jaroko from Germany. Congrats. Give it a big hand. Tell me, Jaro, how does it feel now to be a world champion 2018? Just awesome. Great, great game, great, uh, great event. Totally awesome that I won it. <laughs> And it has surely been a very awesome experience. What yeah. did you get out of this tournament and world championship this year? Yeah, probably I learned more than the year before in Klask and it was awesome to meet all the people and yeah, pretty great. I'm looking forward to the next events. Thank you and congrats. Thank you. Championship 2018. Thank you, and I hope to see you next year. Bye.